Hey, hello, you got Aaron. Henry, oh, it's so good to hear from you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, yeah. I would love to drop everything I'm doing and come and help you with your quest. Yes, that was sarcasm. Thank you, Henry, for pointing out the obvious as always. Hello, everyone. I am so excited to be here today. I'm so excited that you are here. Welcome to my channel. My name is Katie. So I'm obsessed with podcasts. I love them so much, listen to them constantly. One of my favorite podcasts of all, time is called Dungeons and Daddies. They're about to put out their second season. So I thought it would uh, be appropriate to make a video about them. In this video, I am going to be making some recommendations for the daddies, their sons, and some of my favorite NPCs in the podcast. Through the course of the video, I am going to be naming a character giving them a recommendation, and then explaining why I think that book would be appropriate for that character. Let's start off talking about the daddies. My favorite daddy is Henry Oak. Henry, if you don't know, is a Birkenstock rockin', granola crunchin', hippie, druid dad. During one of Henry's dad facts, he said that trees, are his favorite books which is stupid but um i used that as a jumping off point to make this recommendation for henry so i'm gonna recommend around the world in 80 trees by jonathan drory this is a non-fiction book and basically the author takes you through the world with 80 trees. I bought this for my father-in-law. He really enjoyed it. I personally haven't read it yet, but I have heard really good things about it. And I think based on the fact that Henry's favorite book is trees, this is a pretty solid recommendation. My second recommendation for Henry is a little bit spicier because as we all know, Henry is probably the most like sexually open and liberated of the dads. I want to recommend Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. And I think this would be really good for Henry because the first book in the series in particular talks a lot about consent. And I know that that's a really big favorite topic for Henry. Also, it's about a group of people who are pulled away from their world, everything they know, and they're thrown into a new situation and they have to just like deal with it and they make new lives for themselves. I think of all the dads, Henry in particular would really appreciate the struggles that the characters have to go through and he would be able to relate to them really well. He also would really enjoy the sex because that's Henry. I don't know what Glenn Close's favorite book is, but I do know that Glenn Close really loves Disney. He goes there all the time without his son because he's the literal worst. He it loves like the Imagineering aspect of it. He does a lot of research. He said that during the podcast multiple times. I know that this is not his favorite ride because Glenn's favorite Disney ride is Autopia because it covers up the smell of um, the thing that he's really into smoking. I really wanna recommend The Unofficial History of Disney's Haunted Mansion by Jeff Baham. I read this a long time ago and it was really fun when I read it. As you can tell by the title, this is not an official book that has been put out by the Disney company. This is another Disney file like Glenn who has done a bunch of research, is really passionate about it, and wrote this really well-researched microhistory about the Haunted Mansion. For as much as Glenn really loves Disney, 
I think he would really get a click out of it. And I think he would also, as someone who is really into conspiracy theories, really appreciate the stage tricks and the really interesting, simple things that the Imagineers have done with the Haunted Mansion to make it look so ethereal and fantastical. So I'm going to recommend the unofficial history of the Disney Haunted Mansion to Glenn. I think he would enjoy it. It's also not that long. There you go, Glenn. The next dad that I want to make a recommendation for is Daryl Wilson. Canonically, Daryl has said that uh, the Guinness World Record books are his favorite. He also mentioned Really Love Hop on Pop by Dr. Seuss, which is objectively not a great Dr. Seuss book in my subjective opinion. So I really wanna recommend for Daryl this really awesome memoir that I read a couple of years ago, and it's called Does Jesus Really Love Me? by Jeff Chu. Daryl is a devout Catholic. He makes many references to his rosary, to the Bible, to Jesus throughout the uh, podcast. And Daryl also has a gay son. I really appreciate in the podcast that Daryl doesn't have any moments of homophobia. He's really supportive of Grant. He's a really great dad overall, but I just also know the reality of the world that Daryl lives in as a Christian who has a gay son. I think it would be really helpful for Daryl to read a book about a gay man who also is you know, interested in religion, interested in Jesus's teachings and is trying to reconcile the fact that he is gay and there's there's nothing wrong with that and that's not going to change but he also really misses the church and he really misses feeling a part of that community. I really want to give Daryl a resource so that he can be the best possible dad that he can be for Grant because I think it would be really helpful for him as someone who's a devout straight man to see the dilemma that his son is going to go through if Grant still decides to be Catholic or if religion is something that Grant is interested in. I have no idea. I'm gonna recommend this for Daryl. If his favorite book is Hop on Pop, I just feel like Daryl needs some help. I have a second recommendation for Daryl, and it's The Deal by L. Kennedy. If Henry is the most sexually open and liberated of the dads, Daryl is the complete opposite of that. And so you're probably asking, why am I recommending a romance novel to Daryl? I'm recommending it to Daryl because I just want Daryl to be okay with himself sexually. That actually really made me sad during the podcast because I also grew up in a pretty fundamentalist religious uh, situation and sex was really scary to me growing up. Now I'm an adult, I don't feel that way anymore. I read romance novels all the time, it's great. But I empathize with Daryl's uh, anxiety and shame that surrounds sex for him, even though he's a married man uh, in his 40s, right? So I really want him to, and because it's Daryl, I made sure to pick him a sports romance. So the deal series by Ella Kennedy, if you don't know, it's like about four dudes who live in a house together and each book is about a different guy who lives in the house and they all play on the hockey team for their college. So there's a lot of sports talk in this book. It's a big part of all of the heroes' lives. And I, I really love the first one. It's a great start to the series. I just really want the best for, I feel like out of all of the dads, I am honestly the most concerned about Daryl, which is weird because Ron is also here. So, out of all of the dads, I don't think this is gonna come as any shock to anyone who listens to the podcast, but uh, Ron was the most challenging to find a book recommendation for, but I think I got it. I think I, I hit the nail on the head. I wanna recommend 
for Ron is The Cool Bean by Jory John and Pete Oswald. This is a picture book. And I actually recommended picture books to uh, a couple characters. This is not a dig on the characters or the books at all. I actually really think that adults should read picture books. During the podcast, Ron mentions multiple times that he wants to be cool so badly. Ron would unironically pick this up and think to himself, oh, I wanna be cool. I'm, I'm a cool guy, I'll pick this up and I'll learn how to be a cool bean too. And then, you know, it will sneakily teach him that being cool is actually the things that Samantha tries to work on with him with, which is being respectful and kind and you know, all that stuff. So I think this is a per perfect recommendation for Ron. The next dad that I'm going to make a recommendation for is Jodie Foster. I'm going to mention spoilers when I talk about Jody, so I would actually skip ahead if you haven't finished the podcast yet, and I will put a spoiler warning down here just so you don't uh, hear anything that you shouldn't. Don't listen, okay? I warned you. So now that the riffraff is gone, let's talk about Jody. So Jody is at the same time a literal demon and a lawful good paladin? What is a book that I can recommend to Jody to appeal to both of his natures? I came up with the recommendation of The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. The Hollow Places is about a, a woman who goes home after a divorce and she lives with her uncle, who is the sweetest man ever. He owns this really weird, interesting museum. And he basically collects a bunch of like odd things, curios and, you know, weird knickknacks, a lot of taxidermy. People come in, they look at all of his weird stuff, right? He goes away and she's put in charge of uh, the museum. While she's put in charge of the museum, she and her friend find a doorway into another world and it's not like Narnia, it's not very like sweet. It's actually really scary. I think that Jody, the like paladin side of Jody, would really appreciate the sweet uncle, the sweet family relationship. But I also think the demon side of Jody would really appreciate all of the like messed up, uh, screwed up, horror elements of the novel as well. This is the best I could, could, could come up with, but I think I think actually did a really good job. The last dad that I need to make a recommendation for is Walter the Immoral. Walter's adopted son is Peyton Bennett. Peyton is a, a UFC fighter that the daddies pick up in their travels, right? And by UFC, I obviously mean the unfortunate foster children fighting scene. Peyton, and Walter have this really special relationship. So when I was thinking about a book for Walter, I came up with The Giver by Louise Lowry. I came up with this recommendation for Walter because if you don't know, Jonah, who is the main character of The Giver, he and The Giver have a very special relationship in this book. There's also the aspect of his name, Walter the Immoral, and you find out through the course of the podcast that Walter is actually a really stand-up guy. I think Walter would really appreciate the ethical quandaries that are presented in The Giver. Now I want to make some recommendations for the boys. The first boy that I'd like to start off with is my favorite boy, Peyton Bennett. I want to recommend for Peyton The Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors by Drew DeWalt. This book is about the grand adventure that three warriors go on, rock, paper, and scissors. And they all meet each other. And I mean, if you've played the game, you know how it goes. It is very funny. I think Peyton would really enjoy the humor of this book. The illustrations are beautiful. And also um, like scissors are just basically two knives stuck together. And Peyton really loves knives. So I thought this was a hit. The next son that I want to make a recommendation to is Grant Wilson. As I've said previously, Grant is gay. I want to recommend Queer, A Graphic History 
uh, by Barker and Scheel. This is a book that I read I think like a year or two ago when I was just coming to terms with my own queerness actually and this book was really helpful for me and I'm an adult human. I think that anyone who is like coming into their sexuality, trying to figure things out, this book would be really helpful because the book is really great to highlight some of the things about queer history that kind of get glossed over, especially in queer spaces. The exclusion of bisexual people, trans people, non-binary people. The book really goes out of its way to be as inclusive of as many identities as humanly possible. It's also really beautifully drawn. And as like Grant is a kid, I, I think he would really appreciate um, this book. The next recommendation I have is for Terry Jr. Terry Jr. is the, the stepson of Ron Stampler. And because Ron is his stepdad and his mom is a therapist, I think out of all of the boys, Terry would be the most emotionally mature. I wanna recommend The Ghost Bride by Yang Si Chu. I read this a really long time ago, but I remember just immediately loving it gave it five stars. This is about a girl who lives in Malaysia. She becomes a ghost bride. So in the context of the culture that she lives in, basically she is uh, pressured into um, becoming the bride of a dead man. If anyone's gonna pick up on like the really adult, emotionally poignant themes, the Chinese mythology and folklore. I think Terry is gonna be the one who does it, to be perfectly honest. I don't really wanna tell you too much about this book because I feel like if I get into it, it's gonna spoil a lot of the things about this book that make it so special. But just so you know, it is a fantasy novel. There's a lot of fantastical elements that have to do with Chinese mythology and folklore. It's also a young adult novel, but I, I think even like, adults would really appreciate what is going on in this novel. It's incredible. I mean, Terry's a teenager. This is perfect. This is right up his alley. This is age appropriate for him. For Nick Close, the son of Glenn Close, I am recommending Miss Marvel by G. Willow Wilson. I think Nick would really appreciate Kamala's story because Kamala really loves her family, wants to be a part of her family, but also wants to be her own person. And a lot of the conflict that goes on outside of, you know, all of the superhero stuff that goes on in the comic books has to do with her struggle with being her own person, but also being a part of her family and her culture. He would get a lot out of it personally, but I also just think he would think, you know, it's, a comic book it's about fighting it's about like you know becoming a superhero I think he would think that is really cool the last recommendation that I have to make for like some specific kids is Lark and Sparrow Oak they're the twin boys of Henry Oak I really want to recommend The Wild Robot by Peter Brown The Wild Robot is about a robot that basically gets deserted on a like isolated island in the middle of the ocean and the robot has to survive. The robot actually becomes like emotionally attached to all of the animals that are on the island. There's also a lot of instances of conflict. And the reason why I wanna recommend this book for Lark and Sparrow in particular is because the robot cannot fight, like cannot be violent. It's not in her programming. So she has to come up with different ways to resolve conflict with people. And I think Lark in particular would really get a lot out of that. This book also is super well written. It's very engaging. There's illustrations in it, which I think would be really um, engaging for Lark and Sparrow. The first NPC that I would like to make a recommendation to is the character that I'm actually cosplaying right now, Erin O'Neill. She is a garden witch that the daddies meet as they go to Rakaporta. Erin basically exists in the plot of the podcast as 
a way for the daddies to get information about the Forgotten Realms so that they can progress through the story. Aaron is constantly having to deal with all of the BS that the daddies throw at her throughout the show to the point where her life is in jeopardy multiple times. I, I think out of all of the characters in this show, Aaron would really appreciate Men Explain Things to Me by Rebecca Solnit. If you don't know, this is a collection of essays that Rebecca Solnit wrote that deal with feminism. This is definitely a thing that the daddies and Aaron struggle with throughout the show. They just kind of use Aaron for their own plot stuff. And I totally understand why that's the case because it makes sense within the context of the show that they would need to befriend people in the Forgotten Realms to help them figure out what's going on because unlike other D&D &D campaigns, they don't have the luxury of having all of this knowledge about the world that they live in because they're from our world. So I understand the, the plot reason for Aaron, but I also just think that this is a really funny recommendation. I think objectively my favorite NPC in the show besides Aaron is Scam Likely. He is a scammer, as you can probably tell by his name. And Scam Likely is constantly screwing over the daddies, trying to like pull a fast one over on them. I think that Scam, would really appreciate the Jack books. This is a story about a character named Jack who is a little scamp. He's a little troublemaker. He's a little mis mischievous little boy uh, rabbit. He's a rabbit, not a boy. Recommending this book is really hard because on one hand, I really love the artwork. I really love the concept. I love the concept of the characters. It's very reminiscent of the pigeon books where everything is very easy to draw. It's very accessible for children. My child really loves these books. In that way, I'm very grateful for this book series because obviously I want my child to be excited to read, but at the same time, I just wish Jack would kind of tone it down a little bit. But with that said, Scam would love these books. Another favorite character of mine is the library. The library is Scam Likely's cousin, and the library is obsessed with books. So when I was thinking of what could I recommend to the library, I was really trying to think of stories that were native to us into our world. The first book that I thought of for the library was Beneath the Moon by Yoshi Yoshinati. This book is a collection of myths, fairy tales, legend, folklore from all over the world. There are German fairy tales in this, but there's also like Hindu mythology. This is a collection of just one page. Each page also comes with a beautiful illustration that goes along with the story. I think the library would eat this up, and I mean that literally because he gets books from inside his body. Hardball Cough Drop is a dominatrix. She runs a BDSM dungeon within the Forgotten Realms. When I was thinking of a recommendation for Hardball Cough Drop, I immediately thought of The Duke I Tempted by Scarlett Peckman. The way that I pitch this book to people is what if Fifty Shades of Grey was good? This book takes place during I believe Regency England, it might be Victorian England. I'm a little confused on the historical context. This is a story about two people, a man and a woman. This has a really strong BDSM element in it. Hardball Cough Drop out of everyone in the Forgotten Realms would really appreciate the way that BDSM is handled in this book because unlike Fifty Shades of Grey, Scarlett Peckman actually knows what she's talking about and actually cares about exploring the different themes that come with writing a BDSM novel. For Doug the Intern, I want to recommend No One Succeeds Alone by Robert Refkin. I bought this book for my husband. Uh, he is interested in business and all of you know, that stuff. He has not finished it yet, but he's read a chunk of it and he recommended it. He said it was very good. And I just think that Doug could probably use a business book that is a little bit more 
holistic and it's not about like you as a rugged individual need to you know have it all figured out and do everything this book is very much like hey you are successful because of the people around you. It's not just you as an individual. You have to learn from other people. You have to uh, figure out what other people are trying to teach you in your life. People give you opportunities. People give you recommendations. I, I think Doug needs to read this book. And the last NPC that I wanna make a recommendation for is Beth May. Just want to clarify this is not beth may the person who plays ron stampler this is the npc beth may that anthony plays within the podcast it's very just just listen to the podcast it'll make sense i want to recommend for npc beth may midlife bounty hunter by shannon mayer this is actually available on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can go read this for free. And NPC Beth May strikes me as the type of person who owns Kindle Unlimited. Maybe she doesn't remember that she owns Kindle Unlimited, but she definitely does. So this series is about a 40 something year old woman who goes back to her hometown of uh, Savannah, Georgia. She quickly realizes that all of the things that her witch grandmother told her were true like you know vampires are real werewolves are real demons are real etc etc right and she uh, joins an organization to become a bounty hunter for the supernatural residents of savannah this series has a lot of paranormal romance in it our main character has multiple men that she flirts with it's a very good time i think she also just would enjoy just some of the god-awful humor that is in this book i think she would unironically enjoy it um she would know that it's bad but she would still enjoy it so i really recommend uh the first one is midlife uh bounty hunter but there's a bunch in the series and I'm sure Beth could just, you know, go through it really fast. So yeah, I really recommend this for NPC Beth May in particular. Thank you so much for watching this video. Obviously I tailored all of these recommendations for these specific characters, but I hope that you pick up some of the books that I recommended today. So <clears throat> what do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. Bye.